Today we're going to be replacing the idler assembly on this 5.5 ton mini excavator behind me. This machine has about 4100 hours on it, and the idler assembly has just about had it. I know this because every time I move the machine around it squeaks incessantly. Let me show you what I mean. That squeaking is just awful. As you can see, this machine is very irritating to operate right now. And that's true for both me as the operator and for anybody around me, simply because that idler is making so much noise. So we need to replace it. Fortunately, this repair is mechanically pretty straightforward. What I mean by that is there's very little disassembly and reassembly involved. You'll see exactly what I mean when we get to that point. The hardest part is actually going to be removing the track and moving the idler assembly itself around, simply because those components are very heavy and I'm working by myself but you'll see how I managed to make that work out. Now, before we get into the repair itself, I wanna take a look at a few schematics. I want to begin by looking at the entire track assembly so that we can see the components that are involved in allowing the track to move around, of which the idler assembly is one. After we understand how the track works, then we can look at the idler assembly in detail because that is, after all, the component that we're gonna be replacing. So with that being said, let's do it. Let's begin by looking at these two different views of the track frame and the various components that attach to it. The top diagram shows the view from the top, while the bottom diagram shows the view from the side. In both diagrams, the left side is the front of the machine. In the top diagram, you can clearly see the hydraulic drive motor and the sprocket that it turns. This is the only component providing power to the track. Everything else that we're going to talk about is there just to guide the track around the frame. This process begins with the carrier roller, which you can see right here. In the side view, it would be about right here, but you can't see it because they've decided to diagram the swivel joint instead. As the name implies, the carrier roller carries the track over the top of the frame. And once again, it provides no power. It's just a guide. Next up is the idler, located at the front of the machine. The purpose of the idler is to guide the track around the front of the track frame. In the side view here, you can more clearly see the entire idler assembly. Once the track comes off, this whole assembly just pulls right out. In other words, there are no mechanical fasteners holding it down. It's just held in place by the tension between the track and the spring in the grease cylinder in the back here. We'll talk more about those components in just a minute. Finally, on the bottom we have the track rollers. These are just the analog to the carrier roller up top. They guide the track around the bottom of the frame as well as support the weight of the machine. We're now going to talk about the idler assembly in detail. Obviously, the entire assembly centers around the idler wheel, which has bushings on either side of it. These bushings allow the idler to rotate smoothly around the idler shaft. I should also point out that between the arms on either side of the idler wheel, there are a series of seals and o-rings. These are necessary because there is oil at the center of this whole system. For this machine, it's just a straight 30 weight motor oil. This oil lubricates the surface between the idler and the bushings. This is necessary because there are no special bearings. The idler just rotates directly over the bushings. Without the oil, these surfaces would wear very quickly. And this actually is a common point of failure. As these seals age, they can leak a bit. And once you've lost that lubrication, you're just left with metal on metal. This leak can be very hard to spot as well because to begin with, you've only got a few ounces of oil in there. If you're working in the dirt, that amount of oil can easily leak out without you ever noticing. Let's now talk about these components that sit behind the idler wheel. The arms that the idler shaft rests in attach to a large spring, which itself is in front of a grease cylinder. The spring and the grease cylinder are responsible for tensioning the track. Here's how this works. As grease is pumped in through this zerk here, it forces this piston outward. That both compresses this spring and pushes the idler wheel forward. As that idler wheel moves forward, it pulls the track taut. This is where your track tension comes from. Okay, the first thing that we need to do is to remove the track. One of the nice things about working on a mini excavator is that you can use the arm to elevate the side of the machine that you're working on. This makes it much easier to service than say a skid steer where you can't really do that. Once the machine is elevated, I'm gonna remove this metal plate right here. That's the plate that covers the grease cylinder that we just discussed. Remember, if you want to tension the track, you use a grease gun to pump grease into the grease cylinder. Whereas if you want to remove the track like I do now, you remove the bolt that goes into the grease cylinder. 
In this case, it's a 27 millimeter bolt, and once I remove it, all of the grease will come out, the spring will pull the idler in, and the track will lose tension, and at that point I can remove it. Now, removing a track on a machine this size is much easier said than done, but don't worry, I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. Alright, here I am using a little skid steer with pallet forks to remove the track. I begin by pushing the track away from the idler. This is causing it to pull on the idler so that it's fully retracted. You really need it to be all of the way into the track frame in order to easily slip the track off. Next I'm going to use a chain to begin pulling the track off. You always want to start on the idler side like I'm doing here. The reason for this is that the teeth on the drive sprocket tend to hold the track into place. It's much easier to get that side off once the idler side is free. You'll see exactly what I mean in a minute. The chain here got stuck in one of the track links. I just decided to take care of it later once the track was fully removed. At this point, you can just use the forks to pull the track off. You'll see here that the track was getting stuck between the machine and the ground, but I just fixed this by raising the machine a bit more and then it came right off. And there we go. You see, it's really not that hard. Okay, I've got the new idler assembly here, and this thing comes straight from the factory ready to install. They even put oil in it for you, and yes, I did confirm with the service department at the dealer that that is the case. So we are ready to go. They charge you 1500 bucks for this thing, but at least they give you everything that you need. Now, before I slip this thing in, there is one last thing that I should note, which is that there is a right and a wrong way to install this. You can see that this piece on the back here is not symmetrical. This is the bottom, and this is the top. So let's see if I can slip this sucker in. There we go. Okay, I'm back on the skid steer, this time to get the track back onto the machine. I'm going to be using those two dollies that you see in the foreground to help slide the track underneath the track frame. This process requires using both the machine and some manual labor to pull the track into place. But with the fork supporting most of the weight and the dollies on the bottom, it's really not that hard. The most awkward part actually is getting in and out of the machine with the arm raised. In order to assist with that, I put a piece of plywood across the forks to act as a step. You'll see how it works.
You can see here that the plywood also helps to prevent the tracks from sliding back over the forks as I push forward. Also note that when reinstalling the tracks, I start by hooking them over the drive sprocket. This is the opposite of when I took them off, where I started on the other side. 